I want to introduce you to something called somatotypes. This appears in the principles part of your um, level two fitness instructor qualification, but we want to have a little gauge into that now so that we can really understand what's going on. Not all of our clients are made equally. Not everybody um, that we will work with is equal, i.e. Their, their body types are all different. Everybody's got a slightly different body type. And I'm sure you've noticed this before. You might be walking around Tesco's and you can, you can tell a family that are related, can't you? Because they've all got the same kind of... Um, uh, they've all got the same kind of body shape. Like you get one that's full of what we call ectomorphs, whereby they're they're all really tall and lanky and really lean. And then you get a family that's maybe got a lot of endomorphs, whereby they're much stockier in their shape. Okay, so let's have a look in more detail. The one on the left hand side of your screen is what we call an ectomorph. Ectomorphs have long willowy limbs. So long willowy limbs are basically a sign that they're they're much longer um, and they're usually very tall ectomorphs. Um, if they're not tall, then it's just that in proportion to width, they are longer than they are wide. Um, they usually have a very low body fat, um, usually. I have to stress on all of these, environment has a big factor to play. Um, but they usually have a very low body fat and find it very easy to lose weight. So these are those annoying people that can eat loads of Mars bars and still be quite trim. They are usually great at endurance sports as well. So um, the, an example of this would be someone like Paula Radcliffe or Michael Phelps because they are very tall, they've got long limbs. Um, even if they're not tall, then their limbs are still long in comparison to their height. Does that make sense? Um, they do find it difficult to put on big muscles, but the muscles they have are still going to be strong, still going to be effective and very efficient, but they're, they're not big in size. Um, also, they are more likely to have something what we call type 1 muscle fibers. They're going to have more type 1 muscle fibers, even though they have the other types as well. Next one is a mesomorph. A mesomorph is our medium person. These are the ones right in the middle. They have um, kind of an average size uh, bone structure to their limbs, um, i.e. it's not distinctively shortened, not distinctively lengthened, they're kind of medium. Some people will still have the height of, say, an ectomorph, um, but are very adaptive. So some they will have some body fat, but they are basically great all-rounders. They're able to... Um, move their adaptations. They're very, very adaptive. So they can adapt to a specific type of sport very easily. Um, they can get great results um, fairly simply, and that's because they have more type 2A muscle fibers on their bodies as well. And a type 2A muscle fiber can act a bit more like a type 1, and it can act a bit more like a type 2B, which means that it's really adaptive, and also they don't have, they're able to use fat very well in the body as well so they get that lean look too so an example of this would be someone like jessica ennis think about actually although she's not long or willowy she's got an amazing body but she can lend herself to do lots of different types of sport she's very adaptive then also think about arnie there's no doubt to say that arnold schwarzenegger worked very hard for his uh, body he had an amazing body but he has um, immense amount of because he's very tall with it he holds his muscles in a very different way to someone that is literally massive like very stocky with short limbs so think about this that they're slightly longer limbed than what we're going to look at with an endomorph and they have good control over their body fat but they're great all-rounders give them a new sport and they're on it they've adapted now the next one to look at is an endomorph so an endomorph is has got shorter limbs and they have slightly more body fat now the reason why these guys generally struggle more with body fat obviously environment comes into it massively and how we treat our bodies they struggle slightly more with body fat because the muscle types that they have most in their body don't easily use fat as an energy source so they end up storing it more than someone who say is an ectomorph which uses energy uses fat as energy very easily but this does mean that they're very good at power sports, so they're very strong. Um, someone who's, for example, a prop in rugby would be a very good example of this. Um, and you can imagine that 
stocky kind of shape um which would be rugby prop it would be a shot putter it'd be someone that has really explosive movement maybe someone in american football that type of style that's very strong very powerful also any power lifters would definitely go in there as well and these have more of what we call type 2b muscle fiber types because they're able to really push through and get excessive speed and force very quickly but it doesn't last very long they can't keep going for a very long time now to throw a spanner in the works Jennifer Lopez would actually be an example of a, a female version of an endomorph, but she has considered her environment very well. She looks after her body, which means she has an amazing body, but she is, has actually much stronger around the, the legs. So actually she's got, well, she's known for her, her J-Lo bum, isn't she? She's got that strength around the hips and the legs rather than, for example, up in the shoulders, which would be an example of, say, Jessica Ennis, very strong shoulders. So you can see with the different proportions um, and actually it's not that everybody is classically in one of these, but sometimes people will be a mixture and um, it's good to kind of recognize this in our clients because if I have someone um, who's a typical Paula Radcliffe shape, if someone that's like long and uh, that's an ectomorph and um, come in and they say, I want to get really big. I don't care what it takes I just want massive muscles and I need to do it in six weeks you're gonna look at them and go mm, it's not really achievable for you to do it in six weeks it might be achievable for you to do it in six months or a year but not six weeks whereas if you had someone that was a type 2a or type 2b even more so if you get someone that's an endomorph come in and says oh when I get bigger muscles in six weeks you'd be like cool that's doable yeah, so, or if you get an endomorph come in and says, I want to run the marathon, then you need to be able to give them some understanding, actually, there's a lot more training involved, and it's probably going to hurt a lot more. Um, so we kind of need to understand what our bodies are capable of, and use the best parts of our bodies for what they're naturally good at. So it's really key things to consider. Now, as another way of explaining them, um, I like to use cheese as an example. So ectomorph would be like your cheese string, so long and stringy. Then mesomorph would be your dairy triangle, your dairy cheese triangle, um, which means that their shoulders are broader than their hips. Your endomorph would be a classic baby bell kind of shape. 